I think it'd be good to just talk about the history of this because I think what the legislature did was um, deceitful at best and uh, talk, uh, talk about who in the Washington state legislature in 2007 was in that group that caused this piece of legislation to come into law, which is causing people to recidivate, be readmitted to prison, die, um, in really alarming numbers. And um, it was the Pierce County delegation. So for listeners, if you were a member of the Washington State Legislature, in 2007, as far as, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, you're responsible for deaths, for people dying. Um, so what, what happened, uh, so everybody has the background, is in 2005, the legislature uh, passed a bill, Senate Bill 6308, that created a, a task force. And the uh, task force purpose was to reduce recidivism. And, and I'm going to interrupt myself because I think one of the sad things that I've seen the last 15 years is one ridiculous um, task force or committee or governor's fake like we're doing something group or whatever after another. Um, all with the declared uh, purpose of reducing recidivism. And they kind of keep repeating themselves. They keep failing. Uh, recidivism keeps climbing. But politicians keep hoodooing the public into believing that they're trying to, to accomplish something. And it's kind of like we talked about at Town Hall the other day in terms of the biggest lie ever. Um, legislators want the public to believe that recidivism is this mystical, super difficult, uh, unsolvable problem, but they're working on fixing it, right? And that all is a lie, uh, every bit of it. So in after 6308 was passed in 2005, that it created a reentry task force that, that went began work in January of 2006. And it, initially it was pretty amazing. It was bipartisan. It was chaired by Deb, co-chaired by Debbie Regala, who was the Democrat from the Senate and Mike Carroll, who was the Republican from the Senate. And uh, legislative staff was assigned to, to work with participants. There were four work groups. There were about 80 of us um, that worked for nine months and, and, and met multiple times a week. Um, and, um, at the end, the, the recommendations of those, uh, of that reentry task force went to governor Gregoire. And for the most part, everything that was really good and meaningful got voted down by seven voting members. So like Regala was a voting member, Harold Clark, who was one of the most, probably the most despicable secretary of the Department of Corrections in its history, um, who I'm thrilled to say I was part of getting him fired. Um, uh, these were the people that were voting members and they voted down the things that would have worked. And, uh, and so what, what went to Gregoire wasn't uh, anything that would reduce recidivism. And to, to, to the point that one of the really good people in that task force was Mary Helen Roberts, who's now retired from the House of Representatives from Linwood. And I, rem I was in Olympia on another matter, and I was at the Red Lion Hotel, and um, the bill that led to 6157 came out, it was 5070, Senate Bill 5070, and Mary Helen called me. She didn't know I was in town, but she called my cell phone, and she said, have you read this bill yet? And I'm like, no, I've been down here in meetings, and I haven't. And she said, well, I don't think it has anything in it that the task force recommended. 
um, that was meaningful. And, and she said, I'm thinking about um, dropping a bill myself. This was Mary Helen Roberts. And can we get together in the morning? So her schedule and my schedule, we ended up at her office at 7.15 in the morning. Bryn Houghton, who was Adam Klein's uh, legislative aide at the time, was in that meeting. And I'm thinking some representatives from the Quaker lobby and TRRC were also in it. But like 7 o'clock, we met at Mary Helen's Robert, at Bell, our office, in the House of Representatives. And she uh, decided to, to pass a bill that would reflect what, was, what the task force recommended that hadn't been voted down by these Harold Clarks of the world. And frankly... Debbie Regalas and Mike Carroll's of the world. And uh, so she dropped what I think was the best bill in the history of the Washington State Legislature. It was, it was House Bill 1874. Later in the session, uh, Frank Chop and the Democratic Caucus killed her bill in favor of the Senate's omnibus bill, which was 5070. And... Uh, and you can go online to the legislature's website and you can search these things and find them and read them. Uh, but 5070 worked its way through the, uh, through the Senate. And I think two people, uh, it had bipartisan support. And so it passed over to the house of representatives and the important part of this history is it did not have county of origin in it that language was not in 5070 and that's the deceit so uh the uh the republicans in the house hated that bill um and they actually were robo calling people uh, legislators uh in the middle of the night uh that were in the house of representatives telling them if you support this bill, we'll be in your district spending money and doing everything within our power to keep you from being reelected. And I remember Debbie Regala sent me an email at about 1130 at night, and she just said the robocalls have started. And I, the other thing I remember is Frank Chop was getting phone calls at home from, from new legislators who were scared. You know, they didn't know how politics worked in Olympia, and they didn't know what this meant, and they're being robocalled, and, and these newbies – were panicking, and then and then the other people that were worried were people that were in districts where they they barely won election, right? Maybe they won by three percent or two percent or whatever, and those were the ones the Republicans targeted. Anyway, the Repo Republicans hated that bill. It, it made it to the floor of the House of Representatives, and the Republicans hit it with, if I remember right, thirty-five amendments. And, uh, and all the amendments are listed. If you go to Senate Bill 5070 of 2007, uh, you can read the amendments. And, and what happened was uh, Frank Chop, if I remember right, he was Speaker of the House at the time. He had, I think, seven bills that, he, that had to pass because that was signy die. So if you don't know what signy die is, that's, that's the last day of session by law unless the governor – declares a new session and, and brings the legislature back, that's it. Five o'clock on, on signy die, the session is over it, it, and for the year. And, um, and so he had that deadline, and he, he could have voted down. He could have called up every one of those amendments, and, and the Democrats had the votes to vote them down, but it would have taken all day long. And none of the other bills would have passed. So Chop made maybe what was a good decision uh, to let 5070 die. He didn't call it up for a vote. He didn't address the amendments. And 5070 died. So at that point, it's 5 o'clock. The bill, um, 5070, is dead. 6157 didn't really exist except for it was over in ways and means under Marguerite Apprentice is just an empty shell. It's almost like with the stock exchange, they used to, you know, pe public corporations used to, that were authorized to sell stock would sell their assets and you'd have this empty shell and then there was a market 
in the in the 80s and 90s for these shells and sometimes and, and so 6157 was sort of uh an empty shell sitting there waiting for somebody to put something in it and and enter the Pierce County delegation. And by the way, Democrats, because Democrats controlled. And, and well, not only Democrats, because Mike Carroll was a Republican, and, and, but for Pierce County. So let's just say the Pierce County delegation. And they were under pressure from Gerald Horn, who was, uh, if he's alive, he can sue me, but as far as I'm concerned, he was an alcoholic, um, hater kind of a prosecuting attorney. And he had been putting a lot of pressure on members of the delegation from Pierce County to the legislature to, to have county of origin language. He was on it. You can Google him, Gerald with a G, and you can find YouTubes where he's talking about the Department of Corrections making Pierce County be a dumping ground, that more people were being released to Pierce County than came from Pierce County, and he wanted to see that stop. And this guy was uh, maniacal about it, really, and uh, and he and he used fear of people who previously committed sex crimes to 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 make it a, a be an emotional issue where people's brains turned off and their passions activated. And so, I think the long and the short of it is to kowtow to Gerald Horn to get his support, the Pierce County delegation agreed to put county of origin language into 6157. And, and, that, and that, I guess that came after Jim Hargrove was the chair of the Human Services Committee at, at the time. He's retired now. And he had seen for nine months Mike Carroll and Debbie Regala and, and, and legislative staff and, and, and people like myself and everybody else that worked hard in these four work groups worked their butts off for nine months. I mean, really work hard. You drive from wherever you lived in the state. Tim Bouts was coming all the way over from Walla Walla. Um, and, uh, and, 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 wor and work group meetings, right? About housing, about recidivism, about, about LFOs and so on and jobs and opportunity. And Hargrove had seen the hard work that went in this and he didn't want, I was told he literally specifically didn't want Regala and Mike Carroll's work to be for not. So he and I presumably Lisa Brown, but I don't know, uh, Debbie Regala um, and, and others from Pierce County were involved in just taking the language that was in 5070 and just putting it into 6157, but they added county of origin. And, and, and that's, and, and what's, um, I mean, if you Google the definition of democratic process, you're talking about active participation of citizens. And that didn't happen with county of origin. It did not happen. People, uh, and, and people today, I, you know, you've heard me on the show really um, be critical at best of, of Jeannie Darnell. I, I, it's like, um, and that's really my FCC approved language right uh i mean i if you're responsible for somebody dying and for deaths and increased ever increasing recidivism right then your name ought to be called out and and you and Jeannie, if you listen to this fix it go back and fix the wrong that you were part of in 2007 um but they put this language in and then after five o'clock so the session's over it passed I'm using that word loosely, it passed out of the legislature to the governor for signature, having never seen the light of day in any hearing room. It wasn't heard in Ways and Means, Margarita Prentice's committee. It wasn't heard in the House of Representatives committee that oversaw the Department of Corrections. It wasn't heard in Human Services, Hargrove's committee. It wasn't heard anywhere. There was no hearing. There was, there was no discussion. There was no debate. They just picked this language up put it in, sent it to the governor, and Gregoire signed it into law. And then, and since then, it's been a major problem. The Department of Corrections doesn't like this bill. I mean, if it, it, I, I was, I'm not going to name names, but they, they, um, 
they they know it's a problem because it is a problem and and and, and that that will lead me to uh why uh Shalisha and I have Vincent Gronross on the, on on the, on the radio show with us tonight uh, the bottom line is so simple if you take somebody who uh, has been to prison multiple times most of their cases you're going to find like Vincent's come from Tri Cities K- Keith Whiteman from 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 Pierce County uh you know, and so on. And, and, and you see people and I'm going to use Keith and then Vince will talk about Vincent, but, um, you see somebody who's recidivated six times and it's because they're being released to County of origin. Um, and, and, uh, where they know all the wrong people, they know all the dealers, they know all the users, they know where they can, somebody will stake them a bag of meth or whatever it is that they can, you know, turn into cash, right? And, and and so putting them back where they know all the wrong people, don't know the right people, have never been on a college campus, don't know anything but one thing, that's what drives recidivism. And that's why, for example, uh, you know, Keith, in one of hundreds of thousands of examples, you know, recidivate, recidivate, recidivate until we get involved and then we go to the Department of Corrections and we work to get a county of origin exception, which and exceptions are spelled out in the legislature, but prisoners don't know about them. And frankly, we found a million times over Department of Corrections line staff in the prisons, they don't know about the exceptions. We keep 100 color copies of 6157 ready to mail out or send to counselors or or to superintendents saying, hey, this person fits the qualifications for an exception. Don't send them back to their county of origin, for God's sake. They'll die there or they'll catch another case and they'll be back in prison at $35,440 a year. Uh, You know, let them them go to Spokane if that's not their county, or Seattle or Pierce County or Bellingham, anywhere but their county of origin. And once we can get somebody's county of origin changed, then you have a good outcome. And, and I'm going to just um, switch over to Vincent. But, you know, the way this always plays out is somebody in the office, and with Vincent it was Shalisha, is, you know, builds a relationship with a prisoner decides that they're worth working for, that we should invest in them, but they're going to be released to their county of origin. And then uh, somebody bugs me, and then I start talking to the Department of Corrections. And, and, and almost always, since Anna Aylward retired as Assistant Secretary of Community Corrections and thank God she's gone. I mean, I fought her for five years on County of Origin and didn't really win until Dan Pachoki was promoted to deputy secretary. And then he was a level above her and he could override her. And he, and he started authorizing exceptions for us. Um, but, um, so then we reach out to the department of corrections and invariably so far since the retirement of Anna Elward, uh, invariably, the Department of Corrections has done a phenomenal job working with us to allow these. But for the people who don't know the post-prison education program or the people who hit us when we're so broke we can't breathe, uh, and uh, they end up back at their county of origin, you know, right in, in, a, in the mess with drugs and addiction and very quickly are catching new cases and on the way back to prison. 